Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to consider a multivariable version of something which you know very well from single variable calculus, which is that if you have a point of local max or min, then it's a critical point. Now, you probably don't know what a critical point means for a function of multiple variables. And sort of the idea is I'm going to try to, to, to figure out what that should mean to make sense. And I'm going to first begin by looking at the directional derivative version. So what does, what does directional derivative mean for a function? So you have a function f of a vector variable x, you have a point c in the domain, and you have a unit vector u. Okay? Mm -hmm. What does it generally mean to say the directional derivative of f in the direction of u at c? What does this thing mean? Intuitively, what does it mean? Uh, it's the rate of change along the unit vector's direction. Yeah, so basically you can think of the line. So here it is. So, so here is your function. Here's the point C. Let's let's say it's a function of two variables, so I can make it in the plane. And this is the unit vector U. And so what I do is I take this line, which is C plus multiples of U, and I restrict F to this line. Okay, and then I asked what's the derivative of this function, which is now just a function of one parameter as I move along this line, and that's essentially what nabla u f of c is going to be. Okay, well, this just means direction derivative of in the direction of u at the point c, so it's going to be a number. Okay, if it exists, and now the question I have is suppose f has a local max or min at c, what does local max at c mean? Local max. I yeah. means I means f of c is greater than or equal to f of x. Given for, that x is for x is within a neighborhood of c. So the value at c is greater than or equal to the values at points in the immediate neighborhood. Now here we don't really have any left and right per se because we have lots of directions in general. So local max means local max like sort of around in all directions. Okay. Local min would mean local min in all directions. So local max would mean it's greater than or equal to values in some open ball containing the point. Local min would mean it's less than or equal to values in some open ball containing the point. Okay. And now what I'm going to say, suppose it's a local max min in sort of all directions, then in particular, I can say something of the direction derivative in any unit vector direction. And what can I say about this direction derivative? Hmm? What can I say about the direction derivative? If it is local max? Or local min. I mean, okay, let's just say local max. What can you conclude about the direction derivative? Uh, sh it will be less than zero. Less than or equal to zero. Well, it's a this direction derivative is a two-sided motion, so it's actually like sort of saying you sort of doing taking a two-sided derivative. So you can actually conclude that it is equal to zero. Okay. If you just took a one-sided direction derivative, then you would have stuff like what you said, less than equal to zero. Mm -hmm. But but this is two-sided, so we already sort of did that two side. If it Hmm? If it uh -huh. exists. Okay, now I'm going to give. Okay, and the same is true for local min. So if you have a local max or a local min at a point, then in every direction, the directional derivative is zero if it exists. Okay, now I'm going to give a proof of this or a sketch of a proof. How do you think that should work? Well, I'm just going to prove it assuming you already know the one-sided version. So I'm not going to, sorry. I'm just going to prove it assuming you know the single variable version. Okay? So I'm not going to prove the single variable version. I'm going to assume you have that already. So, so it's proof. Sort of proof. I'm not going to go into rigorous details. Okay, now first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define a new function of one variable. 
And the goal of that function is it's going to describe a parameter that will allow me to move along this line. Okay. So, what line was that? It's the line C plus multiples of U. So, So what is this doing? It's essentially, if you picture out here, it's saying you want to describe the restriction of the function to this line, which is C plus multiples of u. Okay, and the way you de de determine a point on the line is you specify the parameter t. Mm -hmm. You just have exactly where it is on the line. Okay. And this is defined around uh, t equals 0, basically, because the function is, is defined in the neighborhood of C. So this in particular defined around zero. Okay, now step one. Step two is that G has a local extreme value at t equals zero, and local whatever. So if f has a local max, G will have a local max. F has a local min. G have a local. So G has a local max or min at T equals zero. Why is that? The value will be f of c. Why is that? Hmm? So what we're saying is that it, so at t equals zero, what are we doing? G of zero is just f of c, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what are we saying? We are saying that if you make t vary slightly, slightly bigger than 0, slightly less than 0, then relative to those, the value at 0 is going to be a local max or min, depending on what you have for f. Mm -hmm. Do you see why that's true? No. Well, f has a local max or min. What that means is essentially that the function f, there is some open ball around c, like that, so it's open ball in all directions, for which the point here is, uh, the value of the point is greater than or equal to the values everywhere. If it's max, the value of the point is less than or equal to values everywhere if it's min. Right? Mm -hmm. But in particular, that means that if you sort of intersect that ball with this line, then it's also a local max min, max or min, for stuff in this interval, this piece of the line. Okay. Right? And therefore, you'll have a local max or min at t equals zero. Mm -hmm. Is that clear or not? Yeah. And the value will be f of c. <coughs> okay. So because it's a local max or min in all directions, sort of relative and open ball, it's also going to be a local max min in a particular direction. There's a direction. What's next? So what can you conclude? Now, g is a function of one variable, right? Mm -hmm. We are now in single variable calculus. So what can you say? G has a what at zero? Local mean max. Yeah, we got, got that, but what's the next step? Local max and min implies? Local max or min implies what? Critical point. Critical point for a function of one variable. Uh -huh. Right, so now we are just using the fact for a function of one variable. So what does that mean? means the so either g prime 0 equals 0 or g prime 0 doesn't exist. So this is where we're using sort of the one variable portion. Okay, what's step 4 going to be? Well, what is g prime 0? g prime 0 is essentially the same as the directional derivative. Mm -hmm. Right? If you go back to the definition of the directional derivative, uh, you can go back and view those videos, you'll see that, that one of the ways of defining the directional derivative was, it's the derivative of this function at t equals 0. Mm -hmm. you remember? Yeah. Okay. So g prime 0 is actually the same as just the directional derivative. So what can you conclude? Well, I'll just write this one. So nabla u f of c 
equals g prime 0 by definition. So just building on step 3, so either it's 0 or it doesn't exist. Okay. Is this, is this now, does this now feel clear? Yes. Okay, can you repeat the entire logic quickly? What are we doing here? Well, if f has a local max or minimum at a point. Yeah, which means it's a local max from all directions. Right? There's a wall, open wall around the point. Yeah. Can you do which it's maximum? Yeah. And then it's directional derivative at that point. No matter along which direction, it's yes, yeah. equal to zero. If it exists. Yeah. Okay. So some directions that may exist, some directions they may not exist, but the directions which it does exist, it has to be zero. Why is that? What's the, the quick intuitive explanation? Uh, because if it is a local max L min, it is a local max L min along any direction. So if you restrict attention to this, uh, to the line, mm -hmm. C plus multiples of U. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then? And then according to the local max L min property, from so the all functions of one variable, mm -hmm. yeah. we'll know that it's a critical point. Well, this function which you get by restricting to the line, it has a critical point. Mm -hmm. It means its derivative at that point is either zero or doesn't exist. Okay. So our conclusion will be if it is a local maximum. Well, and, and that derivative is the same as the direction derivative by definition. Yeah. Okay. And so, therefore, the direction derivative is zero or it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great.